Hello everybody, my name is John Gabriel and in this lesson I'm going to be teaching you about one of the two most important concepts in mathematics, in fact. The first most important concept is the concept of number and the second is the arithmetic mean. Well, it's a little early for you to understand exactly why the arithmetic mean would be so important, but uh, once you are able to have a good grasp on its meaning, you will see later on how it fits into everything in mathematics, in statistics, how it can be used to calculate areas, volumes, hypervolumes, and everything else. So, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you the basics of the arithmetic mean. Let me give you a definition first. So, what is an arithmetic mean? Well, if you're given a set of data, so let's say you're given any set of data, any set of data, in, in particular, let's make the elements of this set numbers. So you're given any set of numbers, okay, <coughs> given any set of numbers, the arithmetic mean, and I'm going to abbreviate it by AM, is that value, is that value, all the elements, all the elements of the set, all the elements of the set would have, would have, if they were made to be, if they were made to be equal through redistribution. Okay? Does that make sense? I'll explain it in a moment. Okay, nothing you've ever been told about the definition of the arithmetic mean is true, excepting what I am telling you here. This is the exact definition. Nothing your professors have told you or your teachers have told you is correct. This is correct. Chances are your teachers have told you that 2 plus 1 plus 3 uh, has an arithmetic mean of 2, yes? because that's 6 divided by 3. Yeah, that's true. But all they've taught you there is how to construct the arithmetic mean. They haven't explained to you what it really means. And so, in this particular lesson, I'm going to explain to you what it really means. So, for the first example, all right, let's look at this particular one that I just, that I just wrote down on my board here. So, we have the number 2, right, the number 1, and the number 3. Now, how do we make all those piles equal? Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? What if we just take this block and transfer it down here, right? And then, it'll all be equal, right? So, this value here, which is 2, would be the arithmetic mean, because now all the piles are equal. So really, what you're doing when you calculate an arithmetic mean is you're saying, let's rearrange all the members of a given set so that they're all equal. Okay, so in this case it turns out to be 2. It doesn't have to be 2. It can be any other value. It's just basically the value which you arrive at once the piles are all equal. All right. So now, there are many uses, as I said, of an arithmetic mean. And uh, area is properly defined in terms of an arithmetic mean. Uh, I'll get into that, and so is volume. I'll get into that in a little while, but first of all, I'd like to give you one more useful example of an arithmetic mean and one useless example. So, so um, when, is, uh, when is an arithmetic mean useful? Well, it's useful when redistribution re distribution makes sense, okay? So, it's only useful when redistribution makes sense. If you can't dis redistribute the data, an arithmetic mean is absolutely useless. And so, uh, let's look at a useful example of an arithmetic mean. Well, suppose you have, <coughs> suppose you have three villages. A, 
B, and C. And each village <coughs> has a little fish pond, right? Where they keep fish inside, like that. And so they've got little fishes here. Two, one, two, three. Now let's suppose that every day all these three villages need exactly two fish to survive, right? They only need two fish to survive. So and there's another there's another pond fish pond here where fish are actually bred in case the villages run out. And of course it's they're not far apart. The villages are not far apart, so if this village uh, doesn't have any fish they can get fish from village A or village C, right? So now, what happens here is that um, we can know whether we have enough fish to feed every person in villages A, B, and C if we know at any time the arithmetic mean of all the fishes in their fish ponds, right? So well, we have two here, one here, and three here. and as we've seen in the previous example, the arithmetic mean is two fish, right? Okay, so that's pretty good. So we know we have enough food. If that mean drops below two fish, so if the mean drops, the arithmetic mean drops below, we have to breed more fish or produce more fish in our breeding pond, right? So this is a useful example of an arithmetic mean, isn't it? Because why? It tells us that at any time we can uh, know whether we have enough food to feed our people if we know the arithmetic mean. And now, uh, how about a useless example? Well, let's look at a useless example. A useless example is one where redistribution, redistribution doesn't make sense, okay? So redistribution doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm actually not writing very tidily, but that's not a problem. Uh, redistribution doesn't make sense. So when does redistribution not make sense? Well, suppose you have a class of 10 students, right? So there are 10 students inside the class. All right, we've all got arms, legs, etc. There are 10 inside them. And we take the arithmetic mean of their test scores. So, and we get an arithmetic mean of 50. Does that mean that everybody passed or that they're all doing reasonably okay? Absolutely not. Well, suppose that seven of them got 30 out of 100. Okay, seven of them got 30 out of 100. One got, uh, two got 90. Two got 90 and another one got a hundred. So this here would give us, what is this here, uh, 210 plus 90 is 300, let's make that a hundred. Let's say one got 90 and two got a hundred, like that. Okay, so you can see now that, you can see now that the arithmetic mean here of all these values, okay, of all these values here, uh, will be what? 500, right? And 500 divided by 10, 500 divided by 10 is 50, right? So, and, and, and this is to be expected because students cannot share their marks. Did you get that? Teachers, educators out there, professors, pay attention to what I'm telling you. Students cannot share their marks. Sitting and calculating class averages is a very dumb exercise. It doesn't tell you anything. And this is an example of why uh, calculating class averages is a very stupid thing to do. Um, so now, uh, this, this example shows us that an arithmetic mean makes no sense because redistribution makes no sense. The students don't share their marks, and it doesn't tell us anything about how well the students did in the class or in the test or in any other respect. So, uh, just to uh, summarize this, class averages for test scores, etc., do not make any sense and are completely useless.
But somebody might turn around and say, oh yeah, well, we have to look at the data for outliers and all that uh, kind of nonsense. Well, let me tell you something. If re redistribution makes sense, you wouldn't have to bother about outliers. Okay? Does that does, does everybody get that? If redistribution doesn't make sense, you don't have to care about checking the data because the arithmetic mean will tell you exactly what you need to know. And this is something a lot of professors don't even know. So they need to sit up and pay attention to what I'm saying. Right. So now, uh, I've given you an example of a useless arithmetic mean and a useful arithmetic mean. The useful one was the example with the fish ponds and the useless ones with the class averages. Now, I'd like to show you that <coughs> we can redefine we can redefine area as the product of two arithmetic means. Okay. So area is really the product of the arithmetic mean of all the vertical line lengths in this rectangle. So let's say that is k divided by the total number, right? Right. So you might say, oh, but Mr. Gabriel, we can't count how many there are inside there. Well, let's suppose there are n vertical lines, okay? So there are n vertical lines. And what is the sum of all them that's going to be? It's going to be kn, isn't it? And what do we have over here when we calculate the average? We have k, yes? So does it matter how many vertical lines we have in the rectangle? No, it doesn't matter. Similarly, if the length was L, then the average of all the horizontal line lengths is going to be L, right? And thus the area will be equal to K times L. An unknown fact, until I revealed it, is that the standard integral is not the limit of an infinite sum or any of that nonsense that professors teach at university. It's actually the product of two arithmetic means. So let me explain it to you. When you have a curve like that later on in calculus, when you study calculus, and you calculate this area here between the curve and between these ordinates and the x-axis, this area here is the product of two arithmetic means. So how is that so? Well, we already know the uh, one arithmetic mean. The one arithmetic mean is the interval. There's always the interval, right? The other arithmetic mean is the average value of all the ordinates. So if we have ordinates inside here like that, of all the ordinate lengths, so we, the average value tells us all the ordinate, the arithmetic mean of all the ordinate lengths. And this is done by a very special theorem called the mean value theorem. Okay. The mean value theorem, which you'll learn about when you study calculus. And there is a constructive proof of this. Um, what you'll see in textbooks is something like this, where they tell you that uh, there is a C. There is a C. That's, uh, that's completely irrelevant nonsense. It doesn't even matter that there is a C such that FC is equal to, uh, let's say, F of B minus F of A over B minus A. That's not really the crux of the mean value theorem. It's true, but it's not the crux. And until I revealed it, nobody knew about that, and nobody actually knew how to prove the mean value theorem before I proved it constructively. So when you get to the right level of calculus, I will show you a simple half a page proof of the mean value theorem. And you will be astounded to know exactly why calculus works. Cal it has nothing to do with infinity, and you'll say, well, there are infinitely many ordinates. Yes, there are. And how can we calculate the average? Well, I'll show you a little trick. And you'll see that it is possible to calculate the uh, arithmetic mean of all these infinitely many orbits. And so this concept here is extended into volumes, where you have volumes of revolution, okay, and into hypervolumes and everything else. And so the arithmetic mean is a very important that concept in mathematics, only second to the concept of number. In the elements of Euclid, uh, there is no direct reference to an arithmetic mean. The closest is something called a plane number. 
a plain number. There is also a solid number, which is uh, an indirect reference to the product of three arithmetic means, because if area is the product of two arithmetic means, then uh, volume is the product of three arithmetic means. Okay, so the arithmetic mean is now uh, one of those concepts that you're going to use in calculus and also in statistics and in every other useful area of mathematics. So let's summarize. Uh, let's go back now and summarize. When is the arithmetic mean useful? So when is it useful? When redistribution makes sense. Okay. When redistribution of the values makes sense. When, when is it useless? Well, exactly the opposite. When redistribution does not make sense, okay? And that, my dear students, is really what, what is an arithmetic mean and how important it is in mathematics and science and statistics, and mathematical statistics and everything else. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and that you've learned a lot. And so you will be able to deal with the arithmetic mean from a completely different perspective now. One that will enable you to uh, be more successful in mathematics and in every other aspect. My name is John Gabriel and this has been a lesson on the arithmetic mean. Till next time, goodbye.